Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Woo! All right. <laughs> well, I am Avery Stork, Chair of Dramatic Writing here at SCAD. And, you know, <laughs> And I am thrilled to welcome you to day three, the final day of TV Fest. Have you had fun? Yeah, it's been amazing. Well, we, the fun is not done yet. We are gonna jump right into a really cool conversation that I've been looking forward to. It's Entertainment Weekly presents Brave Warriors. And I'm, it's my pleasure to introduce the moderator, Jared Hall from Entertainment Weekly. Hello everyone, how are you? Thanks so much for being here. Um, I, I've done this festival the last two years virtual, so it's really nice to be in person with all of you, and uh, congrats on making it to day three. Um, it, historically, when I have moderated these panels at whatever festival, Comic-Con, or here, uh, whatever it might be, it's always been my favorite because uh, just of, of what these folks are about to share with you. Um, so I, I think we should get right to it. I don't wanna waste any more time. Uh, we will get them out here right now. So. Up first, uh, you know him from Reba and Shameless, and he stars in the upcoming series, True Lies, Steve Howey. She has starred in the movies Traffic, Swim Fan, Flight Plan, as well as the series Parenthood, uh, one of my favorites, and currently stars on Will Trent, Erica Christensen. You may know him from the movie Dope, almost certainly as the voice of Miles Morales in the Oscar-winning animated feature, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, also from this series, The Get Down, and currently on Wu-Tang and American Saga, Shameek Moore. Yeah. And last but certainly not least, her movies include Ed TV and Keeping the Faith. She was one part of the titular couple on Dharma and Greg. I think you can figure out which one. And she currently stars on Fear the Walking Dead, Jenna Elfman. Hello and welcome to all of you. Thanks so much for doing this. I, I was serious when I was telling them this is always one of my favorites, if not my favorite panel to uh, moderate. Um, just because I, I gave you a little bit of a tease of this. It's really, it's a chance to like share such great advice uh, with, uh, my, I think most of you are students here. Um, so, so we'll get into that. First I gotta say, do we get to call this a shameless reunion? Cause you were on an episode, right? I was on a couple, yeah. A few, okay. I'm a very naughty person. <laughs> uh, you, yeah, the two of you didn't, yeah, well, so not quite a reunion, but, but sort of. All right, um, well, you know, this, this panel is called Brave Warriors, uh, and, and the people that they are playing uh, are any sort of, you know, strong characters, people who have, who have been through things, uh, people in positions of authority, um, lots of different definitions that you might be able to assign to those two words, Brave Warriors, but uh, I, I will leave that to you, each of you, with this question. Who would you say is that kind of person in your life or career, a brave warrior for you? Well, yeah, for me, uh, the brave warrior would definitely be my mom. She, she was the one that took me to all my acting classes, um, paid for the flights to get to LA for my first pilot season, like all of those things. My family was always very supportive and. My mom was the one to, at the end of the day, you know, cash out the $300 here, $500 there, $700 there. So that's the brave warrior for me. I have to agree with you. My mom did the same thing. I was a, a classically trained ballerina and we didn't have money and driving me every day all over the place, the point, the toe shoes, you know, and, and she was someone who was born in 1935 and they thought she was dead when she was born and threw her in like a bucket and then she started crying. They're like, oh, you're alive. <laughs> so she's had to fight every step of the way through challenging parent issues and she was determined to not do to us what was done to her. 
And a lot of parents say that, but sometimes it's like impossible to not repeat that stuff when it's that traumatic. And she pulled it off. And she was supportive and loving and funny and a feminist and like put all of that into, into me and my brother and my sister. And so I think you're right. And as a mother now myself, I know what it takes and I'm very grateful. There's a screenplay somewhere in that. Get that made. Your yeah. mom's story. Yeah. Um, I, 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 uh, hopefully I'll work myself around to a name, but, um, just thinking of, um, <laughs> literally everyone I've worked with, it's, it takes so much, um, to, to, you know, feed your obsession enough to, to hold on and see it through. And, um, and there are so many moving parts I mean, it's a, it's a testament to humanity that we can make film and television at all. It's incredible how many people have to get aligned to make this thing happen. But um, but every every writer that I've ever worked with, every director that I've ever worked with, I'm just I'm just amazed that we're here and that we made it this far. And um, it it definitely takes a lot to you know pursue art and not. Like just go. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do something that seems easier. Um, I haven't worked myself around to a name yet. But That's all right. Uh, you, you think about it. If you just sure. blurt out a name later, we'll know what you're talking about. <laughs> I got a name. His name's Steve. No one helped me. I did it myself <laughs> because I had a be the hero of your own story. And I'm the my own brave warrior. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, that's not true. Um, I'm a child of the industry. Nepotism is alive and well. <laughs> but you still put just in the hard work. Just because I know work. people. I mean, you still put in the hard work, nope, though. Oh, I'm just no. tall. <laughs> <laughs> Flying by. <laughs> yeah. Like, Reba never whipped you into shape or anything? Oh. Saw that face, Jane. I, I didn't know what that meant. Um, no, she w she yelled one time. Once. And it was at me. Yeah. Like, what? I mean, now all I'm hearing in my head is her yelling van at you, but um, uh, when she that does, happened a lot. When she show. yells, a banjo starts playing now. Uh, <laughs> no, it was just, she just, I was very disrespectful to a director, and she was like, you don't do that. He's our director. You respect him. He's your elder. And I was like, and everybody pointed at me. <laughs> Get him, Reba. <laughs> but she was right, and I apologized. And um, yeah, I, I stopped learn. There you go. making fun of directors in front of her. In front of her is the key. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, well, you haven't done it since, have you? No. Let's see. Okay. All right. <laughs> She's playing at the Hollywood Bowl, though. She is April first yes. and getting tickets. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely, I'm getting a box and everything, and there are huge glasses of wine. Anyway, that's a story for another time. Um, so here's the thing, a lot of times performances get called fearless. And then when I speak to actors, they're like, are you kidding me, I was scared shit. When has that been the case for you that, that people have thought like, oh my God, like you made it look so easy, and you're like, mm -mm, no. My first thought was an audition that I, I actually booked it, but then couldn't do it for whatever reason. But the triumph was that I got the job. Um, and it was a character that was, you know, from Long Island or something. And I was, I went in there and I was like, hey, listen, I have a fantastic dialect coach who I haven't worked with on this audition. So I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna, you know, give you whatever I got right now. And, you know. Anyway, here we are. Let's feel our way through this. <laughs> that which is all like fronting confidence, and then uh, and then I did those scenes and I got the job and and that that was one of those things where like even though I s I did give the whole preface and I said it all out loud, I was like I could definitely fall flat on my face right now. Just not like how badly can I f the accent? Because sure, there's that, but then that could throw me off of everything else and just ruin my whole game because I'm focusing on that. So, yeah. Mm. Does that seem like it's on, on 
I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like every time they say action, I'm in that state. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, you know, artistic church is between action and cut. And it's kind of amazing. It's the only time when you, ha and it's, as we know, is such a collaborative industry and creativity in this realm is so collaborative. And you have all of these people, each of their own departments, each of their own expertise, each of their own goals and struggles. In that moment, when they say action, everybody is aligned and agreeing. And it's kind of magical, and I think we don't think about it, we take it for granted, but it is the most amazing, I feel like everything I've ever done to prepare or, or learn as an artist culminates in that moment, all those times a day when the director says, action. And it's terrifying, and it's invigorating, it's liberating, because I feel like it's the safest space in that moment where I'm in control, but you know, the cameraman, especially on Fear of the Walking Dead, they're your scene partners just as much. They're right there. And the focus puller is tracking every single thing. And we are in the moment. And I can feel them rack focus if I turn and look at something. And it's like this amoeba organism of all these people working together. And it's so sacred and so terrifying and so awesome. Mm -hmm. you know? Beautiful answer. Um, for me, I think I might have been like, I'm 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 a naturally I'm raised by Jamaican so I'm I'm pretty confident but as a <laughs> as a um as a human being that uh, just walks I feel like I'm more introverted um but my confidence comes out when it comes to expressing myself in different mediums artistically or creatively and uh so I usually feel the most fearful when I'm auditioning um, I feel like it's it's a lot like walking up to a, a young lady I might see, and I'm like, I don't know how she's gonna receive me, you know? It's like, I'm open to rejection right here, but I take that leap. It's a lot like that for me. It's like a director or the studio heads or whatever, you know, they have the power to say you're good enough or not good enough, and that really sparked an entirely different part of my brain. So yeah, that's the most fearful part of the process for me. Steve, you're up. This, this, <laughs> right now. Yep. <Yeah. laughs> no, for real. This is the the when I act and I have somebody else's words, I can get lost in that. What I have, I have to be me. <laughs> oh. Checking cool. this a therapy session. Just be tall. You'll be okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Um, yeah, but I think what Jenna was saying is right on. There is that synergy in that moment. And everybody, and there, it, it is scary, but it is exciting. And then the more times you do it, you get better at it. You get, and more times you fail, you get closer to success. And so you just gotta keep doing it over and over again. And then you surprise yourself, surprise others. But yeah, that's, that, acting is way easier than this. <laughs> it's true. Get, getting to be someone else in, in their other, uh, someone else's shoes. I, I get what you mean. Um, Jenna, you, the, the expression you used was um, artistic church yeah. between action and cut. So let's talk a minute about then the separation of church and s personal state, personal <laughs> self um, with, with roles and characters. I have to imagine it's probably a little easier on movies because, you know, production is a little shorter and it's, you know, done. But on, on TV shows, you're living with these characters uh, for, for so long. Um, how do you kind of maintain for yourselves, you know, not letting them become you? too much, you becoming them too much. I think it depends on the production, but still there's, it's hard. Uh, Lenny and I, Lenny James, um, we were talking this morning about it because with the Walking Dead universe, it's like when I'm in production, you're, you're, there's, I don't know, I feel like we're, I'm always in a state of fight or flight, even when I'm like home on a few days off. You know, like over the summer, I was like with my kids and like being off and not thinking about it. And then it was time to prepare for the season of the show. And my husband, we had been hanging out and then he went to walk the dogs. And while he was out, I picked up the script and started working on it. He came back, I put it away and um, I started making lunch. And he's like, are we good? I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, 
your face, are we, are you okay? What's happening? What happened when I went on a walk? I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm fine. Like, you went on a walk. I'm and I was like, oh, my God. No, I started working on June. I started working on June. And the pathos and the trauma. And I was very happy in the kitchen. But that was in me. It's in me. And I'm always chewing on her mind when I'm in production. And I can't help it. I love it. I love her. I'm, and I'm also always wanting to grow. Every take, I want to learn. I want to be better. I, I got to like an insatiable work ethic a little bit. Not as a bragging thing, it's like kind of ridiculous. Like I just get like, oh. And I love to grow and, and so it's always in me and that's hard, but I'm also being myself when I'm not, but it's, it's uh, there's like a shadow always living in me when I'm in production. A shadow is such a, a, shadow is such a great way to say that because it's like a, it's like a whole other person. Um, I, I think one of the most fascinating things about television is how long you get to have a relationship with a character and how your life arc may or may not influence theirs and theirs may or may not influence yours and you're both kind of on these parallel universe trajectories. You can't help but learn from each other. Um, and I'm 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 super black and white about action and cut. Like I'm very. I I leave that those few moments to themselves, and then the rest of the time, sure, trying to bring elements of her life if I need to learn more about her life, you know. But it's it's very like. I I, I always say it's her problem. It's not my problem. <laughs> like. Cause, cause, um, I would hope so in the case, especially with Will Trent. Yeah, the character that I'm playing right now on Will Trent um, also has a, a super traumatic um, upbringing, and um, and she's got um, her walls up, and she's you know just kind of a stoic hard ass. But then there are all these little opportunities in the story to break through that and to see what's actually happening and how, how vulnerable she really is and how much emotion and pain there is in there. And so, and and talking with other actors about it or talking with our director about it or whatever, if, if anybody's like, how, what just happened there where I said action and then you were crying, I was like, well, it's her problem. <laughs> so I'm gonna let her deal with it. Uh, and I'm gonna, that's, it's, it's funny, it's like the biggest, the biggest control that we can take is to definitively relinquish control. As far as acting, it's to, to completely equip yourself with all the information that you need and then let the character deal with it because it's not your place to interfere. You're not a puppeteer. You're not trying to make them, I mean, if, if the writing is good and if you've worked it out that, you know, a, a sort of natural course of action can occur, then you just have to like let it go and let that happen and and just be there, let the ghost be there and take over and do their thing and then uh, and then try to set as aside when when it makes sense to, yeah, I mean, if you've got another couple months of you know the show, I've only got probably another four weeks on my show, and, and I'm sure my life will change once I fully take my attention off of her. I was on my last job before this. I knew that I was coming here to do this job, and I couldn't, I was like, I can't, there's no, I have to finish this. And then when she's gone, then one ghost at a time. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then it's like a it's gel all over a light. It's, yeah. it's just the gel is there, and you can't, you just gotta like finish, and then take yeah. the gel off, and then, yeah. Have you found a separation? Are you like action star at home now? <laughs> no, <laughs> not fighting as a spy. Oh, man. That's an interesting thing, though. The physicality of a character has, does come home with you. Oh, it sucks. <laughs> it's hard. That's it. Oh. <laughs> um, more not more often, or more easily, or yeah. Careful what you wish for. You just might get it. Mm. I've always wanted to do action. I've got to do it, and it's really hard. It's really, really hard. Broke my finger. Pull oh, my that's, pull, that's that 
pulled my quadricep, hurt my back. Um, it was it was crazy, but it was a, an amazing experience just, you know, to do it. But, um, yeah, what was the question? Does the separation oh, yeah, between that, yeah, that the separation. performer and the... And the persona, you're, who you're playing. Yeah. yeah, that's tough, man. There, I, I agree with what they're saying. Like, um, once you're in it, it's a different... It's a different world, and you, you you create this this world, or you try to with these other people, and then you have to go home and like you know feed the kids and take out the dishwasher and not blow up at your partner. And yeah, you get you get used to getting beverages with a walkie-talkie. <laughs> um, and so I sometimes have to park, and I can't go home right away. Like I just have to sit in my car. Until I feel enough of it just kind of like chill. And yeah, like, being a famous actor is hard. <laughs> you guys don't know what we have to deal with. But, but, but I mean, here's the thing. It happens with a lot of industries. You don't want to take work home with you. You know, I'm sure people in finance or, you know, high stress. Unless stuff, like, they're hot. Sure. But you know How inappropriate can I be? Uh, well, no, but... <laughs> You know what's interesting too, I mean, at, at the time that you get to fully disconnect, you can see then the, the chasm of difference between that person's viewpoint and your own. Then it becomes such a, such a distinction, you know? Like they view the world in a completely different way than you, they have a whole different life experience leading up to that point. And, and then it's amazing. Then it's amazing to be like, oh, I'm glad that's not around anymore. That's that's. Cool. But in any department, even you know, like with our camera guys, I think as artists, we're imbuing the universe that we're in the middle of creating. Do you know? And so whether it's our camera guys, the writers, props, everyone's in that zone of creativity together. So everyone's kind of wearing the uniform of whatever that aesthetic or story is in their own department. Shmeek. I'm a little nervous to give mine. Um, I'm very different than you guys. It's very interesting I'm to from everybody. Here. Yeah. Um, that's why I really liked working with. Uh, I'm doing a show called Wu Tang and American Saga. It's the last season um, coming out next week. Working with like nine other like young black men with like the same like like you come there. It's my show. This is my like you know when. <laughs> It's like so alpha energy, it's very, it took me, it took for me to, um, because I approach, I approach my characters very like, I, one thing I don't like to do is like, like the reason I don't do plays and stuff is because I don't, I'm not like a theatrical type of actor, like hello, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's not my like, you know, I like a very grounded, believable, damn, did I just meet you in real life through your film kind of like style of acting? So that's how I approach it. So I like to find different parts of myself. For example, I'm nothing like Raekwon. I've never sold drugs or nothing. I've never, but I've always wondered what it would be like when somebody said something to me and I just was like, yeah, son, what'd you say, son? <laughs> What'd you say, like, and really mean it? Like, yeah, I'm about that. I'm really about that right now, you know? I wasn't raised like that. I was not raised like that. So for me to be able to find what that would be, in my mind, I always was like, should I have handled it like this? Should I have handled it like that? I would play a situation like, oh, I could have said this. I could have did that. You're not alone. You're not alone. Lenny James, same thing. Where? Mr. Lenny James, same thing. I'm like, I just thought another way I should do that. He says, all the time, all the time. So, or, no, it's I horrible. mean, yeah. Very <laughs> from the best of us. But what Ray have done exactly. So in in re in reality, you know, how do I get out of that? My the reason I brought up my castmates because they was young men as well, and they was like, Shamik, turn that off. <laughs> Stop, like I'm smoking my cigarette. Don't come up to me talking like you're from New York. You're from Atlanta. Like that's how they was talking to me, you know. And it was like, I'm just in my bag until like. You know, you see the results, and we, we all fed off of each other. I learned so much from, like, a castmate of mine, like, Sadiq, who went to school. This is his first job. Like, I was kicked out of my acting class. Acting teacher told me I'd never be an actor, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. But he's in school, and like I have a friend named Yaya in the Get Down who went on to play all these amazing. Ca- like these guys went to school, and the way that they approach it, when especially with me, like going there, learning my lines ten minutes before, like I I love a a free consciousness type of like I I hate I hate the feeling that I'm working as an actor. I like to feel like I'm having fun. I like I I wasn't I didn't grow up like I want to be an actor. You know I was into music, I'm dancing and stuff. Acting was like, almost like it chose me, you know? And um, through the characters I've been able to play in Dope and it's like culturally driven characters. Um, back to my point. Um, um, when it comes to like getting, and I've never played like a Joker, but if I did, because of my style, it could be, it could be a little like, it could be something where I could have to, my answer might change. Right now I just go on my vacation, you know what I'm saying? I, I spend my time alone. I'm like a homebody. I come back home, see my family, listen to the Jamaican accent. Oh, yeah, you're not from New York. You know what I'm saying? You don't even move this way. Like, oh, yeah, I don't react to people like that. As soon as somebody disrespect me, and in reality, like a security guard last night, we're celebrating. I had to realize I'm not Raekwon. <laughs> I'm not Raekwon. Let me, let me relax before I start something I'm really not ready to finish. I just had a... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, enjoying my night, enjoying my life. It, it doesn't need to go left. So that's the beauty of acting for me. And that's for right now, I haven't had to like really pull myself away other than in those ways. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I guess, Erica, you've actually already kind of answered this question, but I will pose it uh, to the others. Uh, an audition you had that went so well and you're like, this is mine and you didn't get it. Um, most of them. But, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Do you feel it's o- often that way that the ones you feel the best about you don't get, but the auditions that you feel like, eh, that was a that you book those? Do you know every job I've ever done, uh, other than like the first few sort of guest star roles? Since then, I've we're not from an. I've never gotten a job from an audition. I'm I either suck at auditions. I hate them. I, I hate them. <laughs> this is so good because I love them. So we're gonna. I hate them. Yeah. Um, I've gotten. I I don't know what happens to me. I just I it. I I don't I can't, I wish I could articulate it. Maybe I could get better at it. Um, yeah. Are you an overthinker in them uh, or about them? I don't know. If I knew, I'd probably solve it by now. What about the Zooms now? Do you, have you done the Zoom? No, I, 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 I literally have given up. I, like, won't. Oh. I'm like, I'll, I have to rig my career now to be, like, I have to, like, throw some magic potion where I just, I can get things by other... Happens, yeah. You know, like, a, um, I don't know, like, fear. Never in a million years would I think they would offer me fear. Like, I hadn't, I had done some drama, but not nothing that they would, like, offer me a series regular on, on this show. And they did, out of nowhere, at the weirdest time, at the most necessary time for me. I needed this role so bad. I was, like, crying on the couch after so much frustration and failures and... Um, and, and, and was like going through like a second puberty, like as a, in my career. And, and I needed something new. I needed to reinvent myself. I needed to challenge myself. I needed to, I was a woman now. Like my career sparked when I was still kind of a girl and comedy and it was amazing. And I had all the experiences, all the glories. And it was kind of like, what now? Cause I just kept trying to repeat it and it was not working. And, uh, and I had to sort of, take a walk and look at the sky and go, okay, really, what is, what do I want to be communicating? What do I want to be spending my days doing as an artist now? And I was like, I'm a woman now. I'm a mother. I've been with my husband for 32 years. I've had so many experiences. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? (laughs) Um, I want to like stay in the moment. I don't want to bounce out with jokes. Like I've done it. I want to stay in the moment. I want to explore humanity. I want to explore the human condition as a woman. And then 10 days later, once I sorted that out and got off the couch crying and like granted myself some time and space as an artist to like go, what do you want to be communicating right now? Um, 10 days later, they called and offered me the role. 
So I'm like, I think I just need to operate like that. Because I can't, uh, Dharma Greg was created for me um, from a development deal because of a show I had done before where I got some attention, you know, with comedy. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know what it is. Clearly, I've got a chip about auditions, so I'm sure they can <laughs> smell it. <laughs> I wish I was good at it. I try to look at it as an opportunity to, like, be a character in this moment. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't sit right. So I just have to rig my career in ways I can go around it somehow. OK, so why do you love them? <laughs> Please, maybe well, I can learn something. Because, uh, because it's playtime. Because theoretically, the people that you're auditioning for um, ought to be able to play with you. You know, certainly they won't always. Um, and there's plenty of times where they're like the worst ones are just like where they're like thanks so much and you're like you're welcome bye I, okay fine um, but but even then sometimes I'll be like well wait what so or before we do the scenes I'm like have you seen a lot of actors for this like what's work like what's working have you seen a lot of girls that are that look like me or you know what's happening here. So, so you're um, or, using it as an opportunity to get feedback on the spot. Yeah, like here, and then, I, and then, or if I go, you know what, I I have a take. Let's see what you think. We do this, and then, um, as long as they're willing to talk to you, even if you're way off, there's still a path forward. And and in being on the other side, like seeing actors' tapes who've auditioned for the show that I'm doing now. Um, and hearing the feedback behind the scenes of going like, yeah, they were way off with that first one, but we sent notes and they're gonna make another tape. Amazing. Um, or um, basically what the short answer is that it's play time. And um, one thing I wanna say about the like, you know, the ones where you think that you fail and then you get the job and the ones you think you killed it and then you don't get the job. I want to be really wary of like laying that in as some law because because then you don't want to not trust yourself because there have been ones where I thought I killed it and then I got it, you know? Um, and that's where you want to live is like, or have no opinion about it too, which is a lot of the time kind of what I do where I, I go, I think I was in the zone there, but it's not my department, that's the director's department, if it's working, because they've got the view from back here, and they know the entire piece, they know the other characters, um, that applies as much or more to actually working than to auditioning, but certainly to auditioning too. I'm like, does, does this fit in to, you know, is, does this puzzle piece work? And then you know it's not personal if you don't work, because it's, truly the the best 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 if anybody wants to be an actor and you have the opportunity to work in a casting office as a reader um i ha i haven't done that but i have been on the other side of the casting table enough to see six actors read for the same role and everybody's so good and so different and it just makes you appreciate like you can't you cannot take it personally because somebody i go well that person's amazing that person was actually maybe the best actor but they're like oh well this person it shifts the dynamic with the other character because this person has a little more vulnerability and that brings out the strength in the other character all, all these factors that you you don't know as an actor you can try to encompass as much of that as you can but um i'm like i'm up on my soapbox but um but back to why i love auditions it's just <coughs> Because I'm like you, I like, for auditions, I'll probably learn the lines, but for work, I don't learn the lines, <laughs> you know? <laughs> for like, I'm work, I'm like, if I know who the person is, then I'm here, let, it's her problem. Let her deal with it. For auditions, I gotta do a little bit, like I actually do know how the scene goes. Um, but then certainly now with self-tapes, how everything is a self-tape, you have, you have to choose a take. So it's on you. If you hate it, don't send it. Well, yeah, I was gonna say you mentioned Zoom, uh, I hate and you yeah, because I, I, okay. I would go I and I would listen to the other actors, oh, and no. they would all the time. You do you. <laughs> uh, I I would go and listen, and I would steal all the good shit, and I would not do the shit that didn't work. 
and I and I was like go way early, and they'd be like, "What are you doing?" And I'm be like, "I'm going over my lines." And then I'd be like leaning on the wall. I'd go into the other room, and now I have to do Zoom, right? You have to like send in your own takes. I can't listen. I can't cheat. The whole yeah, I was cheating the whole time. This listen, my don't listen to me. I, I'm. <laughs> I, I don't even shouldn't even be up here for real. It's, these are I, like these are real creative <laughs> artists. I, I'm just you know no, you were, using you were my learning, privilege you were observing, for the, you were... <laughs> for evil. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly not. It's 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 working. Yeah, but that's, I mean, no, I mean, I, I I think give yourself a a little grace there. I look at it maybe as as learning, observing, because if you were. Picking up on what they were doing right. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Exactly, and, and if you can execute it, then that's all you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, I, I miss auditioning so much because it was, it, I, would get, I would get so nervous that I would go to a grocery store and I would go to the checkout line and I would go, Every, everyone, can I have everyone's attention please? Can I have everyone's attention please? Thank you. And I would leave, and I would, I would be all shaking, my face would be red. So when I'd go in the audition, it wasn't as bad as Ralph's. What? I, I, Rock and roll Ralph's on Sunset? I, you have to practice fear. You have to practice fear and get it out of your head. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta go up to people and act the fool, and then have them look at you and like, what is wrong with you? And then you're just like, I don't know. And then you leave that situation and it just builds up like powers. So then when you go into the audition or put it on Zoom, you can be like, oh no, yeah, I've been through the fire. Like this is, this is nothing. But that's something interesting you say and any others who've uh, worked in comedy can, can jump in here, um, that a lot of comedy is acting a fool. Uh, and I know a lot of people are like, I, I don't like a career it because about you don't want to like, I don't, I don't like feeling embarrassed or something like that, but how do you let that go? And that's kind of one of your approaches. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't take a lot of things too seriously. Um, I, I take my friends and family seriously, but you know, I take, I, this business has been really good to me, but I grew up in it. So I had a different perspective and um, a lot of amazing people and some of the best people I ever met in my life are in this business, and they are the camera operators, they are the focus pullers, they are the sound, they are the costume, they are the props. They are the people who make um, it all work because they're artists and they wanna have this collaborative journey. And we as actors, performers, we get all, we get the light, we get the glory, we get all that, but really we're, it is a collaborative group effort and when it is right, when it does sink, it's special. And that's when the show goes multiple seasons because that thing, the, the lightning in the bottle is, uh, is present. And so you can, you know, it can make a lot of people a lot of money if, it, if you got lightning in the bottle, but um, yeah. yeah. Q&A? Yeah, I was, I was actually about to say, start thinking, we're, uh, we're going to be asking, uh, taking your questions in about uh, to five, ten minutes or so. Yeah. But is there, do anyone have anything to say also on like, like comedy and, and kind of just throwing away those, uh, you know. Be funny, whatever, go. Whatever's yeah. holding you back. Jenna. I will say about comedy, if it, is, is anyone want to hear anything about comedy? Is it, okay. But no, really, no, because if it's like not an interest, then I wouldn't say but in, you know, to believe, it has to do with belief. Like when I'm, and you can't judge the character you're playing. Yeah. And you also, I never once, not once, not ever, um, thought about the punchline or considered where the punchline was. I never put attention on any punchline, ever. And when I'm watching like comedies, I can always, if I know what's gonna happen next, like am I laughing? I'm not laughing. And when you find yourself laughing in life, it's because you didn't see it coming. The things that make you laugh, you're like, oh! it's because that, there's that element of surprise because you didn't predict it. There's not prediction. And so with comedy, I found the way um, that worked for me was 
a total belief in the character I'm playing, total willingness to be the fool. Um, and then also before that moment that I know everyone agrees is supposed to be the funny moment, I purposefully, as the character, lean lean with my intention and attention in a different direction, knowing what's coming, so when it comes, I'm not already headed in that direction. So it comes, and the audience is watching me go that way, and all of a sudden, I come this way with the response. Um, and that, to me, if you then go and study the greats in comedy, you will see this is a common denominator. You don't see the funny coming. And, and learning how to build that into your own comedic architecture of rhythm um, for the character or for the genre or what that essence of the, whoever the writer is that's determining the aesthetic of that comedy that you're playing, sort of know what that is and then you can build for yourself the, the roadmap of mislead to the reveal with total belief and commitment. You uh, talked about being on the couch and crying and, and being upset and you know you you got to pick yourself back up at some point um was there for each of you any um like a, a specific role something that got away that just kind of felt like very personally devastating and how did you recover and keep on going from there um for me i feel like there's a recent audition that i'm probably ultimately you know, I believe everything happens for a reason. It was for me, he's already mine, you know. Time is a construct. It's a part of the system. But anyway, uh, our perspective of time, at least, is, is based on our reality. Um, there's been so many, but I will say, uh, I have a, I, there's two situations. It wasn't like a, the first situation is I really wanted to play Spider-Man live action. I ended up playing The Voice, which was, a blessing, right? But I also sat down with John Berg as soon as Dope came out. I was getting a lot of love, X, Y, and Z. I sat down with John Berg when he was at DC. I was like, I know you got plans for Static Shock. <laughs> I know you got some plans for Static Shock, so let's not play with the culture. Let's do this. <laughs> and um, there was a lot of movement, whatever. He ended up not working there uh, much longer after that. Long story short, I have a friend. Uh, he ended up obtaining the uh, the rights somehow. Like they sent me the script. I was already with the director Reggie Hudlin at the time, and it was like coming together. Next thing I know, he doesn't have any control on the. Pro I had somebody get the rights to this project and like be like, "Let me give you an example." <clears throat> Let me give you an example. This is the most hurtful thing to me. Hurting yeah. listening to this. I'm like. Oh. It's it, to me, to me, because I still got I got love for my my brother. To me, it was like you see a a part a condo you love, right? Atlanta, New York, Texas, L.A., whatever. I love this condo. Your homie happens to own the condo now, the whole building. So you're like, oh shoot, cool. So I'm already gonna pay you ten grand a month. This is where I'm gonna. Da, 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 da. He's like, I think you should live in a house. I think this apartment, con this condo is great, but it's so it's childish. I think you need a house. So I don't want you to stay in this con the, uh, the condo. <laughs> I want you to go get a house. And to me, that's how it, it, it was just kind of, I was like, he played chess. Not only did I learn from it, I had some sort of admiration for the, the tenacity, the, the gangster in that. You know what I'm saying? And then on the other hand, it was the little kid in me like, but if it's meant to be, it will be. The other one was Dirty Dancing, but that was coming out without me, so. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Dirty Dancing? Dirty Dancing, yeah, I just went up for it. I was testing for it. I was filming a comedy. Very excited. Um, they've been, they was talking to me for a little while. And I think it came down to what you were saying. It was like, there's a lot of other great actors in there. Um, obviously, I can't even give that away because that movie's not even out. I can't even, <laughs> like, uh, it's, uh, you know what I'm saying? I probably messed that one up just now. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I should stop talking about that. <laughs> I, have, I have nothing to do with that project, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But those were the two, I would say, mm -hmm. that actually had an impact as of, as of like, in my mind. Yeah. Every audition, I, every time I take time 
to stop whatever else I'm doing in any other creative medium, <laughs> you know, to like audition. I get it, it's playtime, but that's why I respect actor actors. You know what I'm saying? Like I was saying about my like Yaya and Sadiq, I kind of lost my train of thought, but like those guys care about every step of like every like where's my staging? Where's the, it's like for me it's like I just need to know my character and like beyond that when they say action you're going to get this energy. You know what I'm saying? That's all that's the only thing I have control over is me. But I I got so much respect for the trained actors, I and whatnot, because there's so many times where like they catch things that make the scene better, where I would have just been chilling, expecting the director or whoever's in charge of it to catch it. You know, they're like they're thinking about it in a very different way than me. I'm very lax. I'm very like confident in like as long as I know my character, which is why I approach it like spiritually. Like I know this part of myself now. I'm not this person, but this is what I would be like if I was this person now. I'm just looking at these lines, do, 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 got you. Now I'm looking at you, now I'm in character, I don't gotta worry about the lines, you giving, it, you giving it to me soft, I wanna steal this scene, I'm gonna give it to you hard. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's, that's my approach to it, you know, yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, start, if uh, any of you have questions, you can go ahead and start raising your hands and I'll let you guys uh, finish answering this question in, um, about uh, auditions and then we'll get, we'll get to you in just a second, I'm gonna let them finish answering this one. There have been so, so many, um, so many that I actually never even had an opportunity for. But, but like, here's the the the. If I'm gonna try to find like the worst part of it, the worst part of it, at, and this happened a long time ago, where there was me. I was working with another actress, and I was like, any of the adjectives that you could throw out about me that I would like, that I would hope. <laughs> She's more that, that, all of those things, all of them. She's more all of those things than me, so where do I go from here? How do I go back to my individuality and just cut that out of the equation? Because that's there's no way that I could like compete with this construct of how I perceive her and you know other, competition you know it's kind of categorical competition um and those are the ones that hurt you know the ones that the the ones that hurt are like an audition where i auditioned for a big director and the feedback that i got was like in the room he felt she was too nice you were too nice or something and i was like what we taped the audition watch the tape I know you were in the room with me and I'm a nice person, but watch the scenes. And I expected then that he would and that maybe I had a shot at that job and then someone who's categorically fairly similar to me got the job and I was like, wow. There, that, that just seems like all the right moves equated to the wrong thing. Um, and then And then, so just basically like, the answer is always like just how you have to trust that you are yourself and imagine seeing a dozen actors or actresses audition for the same role. Everybody's gonna do it different. All the best stuff is gonna be stolen by Steve and then he's gonna do those things. <laughs> um, but but you, just, you just are you, period, the end. So you don't have to worry about trying to be you because you are and that's that. Um, that's kind of, and then you're you are who you are at different parts of your life. You know, there's there's just all of those things that like you have to accept as not being under your control, and that's cool. Steve or Jenna? Don't talk to me about auditions. <laughs> no, that's true. We we know. Yeah, well, okay. <clears throat> it's all their loss. <laughs> yeah. All the auditions that I didn't I mean, get. Right. Um, part I'm 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 being serious when I say that because. Um, you know, we talked about this being like, you know, but I kind of look at it from like a, a, like a rapper's point of view, like because they, you know, come out they're like, I'm I'm the best, I'm amazing, I'm an alien, I'm different. You have to feel that way, and if even if you don't believe it, yeah, fake it, yeah. fake it, and then see if that helps. Um, Be your biggest cheerleader, your best. You um, have hype man, to. Hype woman. Who, no, who else is going to do it? Well, yeah, because why would you audition if you don't think you have a shot? Exactly. 
or pursue it at all. If you oh, I, I hope I'll get it. No, you're, you're going there to change their mind, to, to, to let them experience you. You're, you're welcome that you're meeting me. You know? Because it's like if you were directing something, what would you want? Who would you want to step in? Would you want like, <laughs> or would you want like, hey, I'm here. I don't know what that was. But yes. But do it in the room. It's great. If that's your thing, go in the room and go whatever you want to do. <laughs> get it. Yes. All right. We'll get your question. Go ahead. I don't think this is, oh, now it's on. Hi, um, my name is Anders. I'm a dramatic writing student, um, which first off, thank y'all all for being here. I've watched at least one of every show or movie that y'all have been in and have like looked up to y'all as actors for a really long time. Um, Cause like TV and film have been like my life literally since I was born. Um, but both uh, from a, I think writers can like relate to this too, from an acting perspective, cause I used to do theater a lot and still am trying to do it as well. How do you get past the self, like, especially in comedy is what I struggle in the most, the self like cringe of having to like face a character who's maybe doing stuff that you're like, Oh, this is like obviously stupid or, Oh, this character is like, you know, making a lot of bad decisions. And sometimes like, because when I act, I get really into that, like feeling and headspace of that character. But at the same time, like as I'm self-aware that it's just that character, but like, how do you get past that? Like, Oh, this is really hard to like process and like, go with because it just like kind of hurts to have to process and go with. But it can't go through your judgment. You can't, like what an actor playing like someone horrible, like Hitler or something. I think you know what I mean? He, he, he has to understand the problem that Hitler was trying to solve for himself. He has to understand the desire for love and that to get it was a very strange, or to feel in control of anything and you know how out of control he must have felt at some time in his life that he had to go that hard and that he believed so heavily in what he was doing and you have to believe that you know you can't judge it and go this guy's killing millions of Jews this is horrible i can you know you can don't don't play it then right. just don't take the role because but to be that and you have to understand i think too the purpose of the story of that character in the story what what is this character ultimately going to land in the lap or the heart like of you like as an audience member you know how much tv and film and these stories have affected you you're going to do that for someone through this character so you have to understand what that pathos is and and you know is someone i remember saying like you can kill an ant you can play a murderer you know what i mean because it's like an essence of destruction and control and then you just turn the volume up big time you know, and find those nuances, but you can't judge it. You have to appreciate it, understand, personalize like your version of that, like, you know, like what he was saying. It's like, if I was this, or this is sort of that thing that I've seen people do, or I understand, or I disagree with so much, I'm gonna embody it fully That's, to understand it. Yeah. I mean, that actually, the fact that you know what's wrong with the character means that you can play it because you're in on the joke, you know? You, because that's, you're on the audience's side personally. You are on the audience's side of being like, look at this dumbass, if that's what the character is, right? Yeah. So you, you like, the more dumbass they are, then great, like, you killed it. You know what, I, you just, but you have been an audience member. You can't, you have to throw the audience member viewpoint out. You're trying to play the character with the viewpoint, your viewpoint as an audience member. Yeah. That's great. Uh, who's next? Oh, 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 oh no. Oh. But for real though? Oh, sorry. Well, let me, let me in with this real quickly. Uh, Sc Scads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry guys. I, I mean, you, you got us. Like who, who's, I have a question. Is there another panel coming into the room? Here? Next I mean, who's, oh, who's, okay. who's the next venue? Are they better than us? Does anyone need to? Because we, we, this is the best room. You guys room have to get though. anywhere? No, <laughs> let's stay. Mystery, but there's something. Let's stay and a okay. answer some <laughs> questions. Yeah. 
to a revolution. All right. Nice. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Hi. My name is Zora. Thank you all for coming. Hi, Zora. So just to piggyback off the stealing like an artist, that's what I call it, because if it worked for you and I see it can work for me, I'm going to do it. Um, but overall, just working off of each other, there was a comment that you made that really stuck with me about like the church. It, it was like the metaphor. The to the church. Yeah, the metaphor like to time. the creative church. So in terms of... Let me get this question together. In terms of when you guys are on set, doing your various works and you're finding these ways to want to connect with your different scene partners or even connect with someone that you may not even have any dialogue towards how are you able to maneuver that and also implement maybe taking things from other people or sitting and understanding one another or just being in each other's presence i'm just to answer that question and your question it's practice it's just you got to do it all the time if you do it all the time you'll learn in the action of doing it, you'll learn. Because every, if you'll, you'll never repeat the same thing. So it, it, it is a constant, you know, um, I, find, I found so much joy in um, my work as of late because of the 20 years before. I didn't know shit. It was, it was a lot of fear. There was a lot of uh, upset, not knowing how to like, you know, because it was my own shit. I had my own stuff that I was bringing and that I was probably putting on to other people. Just doing it, being lucky enough to do it over and over and over again. And you're like, oh, it doesn't have to be that bad. It can be really joyous. It can be fun. It can be creative. It's a practice. You got you to gotta create it here. You got to create it with your friends. You got to just keep creating. And then you'll just get, you'll just get better at it. You really will. And everyone has their own process, too. So, yeah. like, I came in swinging hard with love on this one project, and I was like, oh, you all don't feel the same way as me? <laughs> you're not all as enthusiastic to connect as much as I am? And then you're just like, oh. <laughs> so to go, it, that, that, some people don't connect that way. And so observe, look, just observe. And again, between action and cut, that's when you're watching what's coming at you. That's when you're, but beside, you know, just on set, people have their own process. Some people like shut off. They don't want to talk. They don't want to hang. They don't want any more friends. They don't want you. They're not interested. And you, you just can't, or they're just in the, that's what their shadow of the character's making them be. And that's their process. So not everyone wants to be like a excited group sometimes. That's just the way it is. We are in an industry where people get hurt and they change and they become grumpy. And you can't let it, that's why between action and cut is when the mo everyone's the most aligned. Unless you have somebody who's really trying to sabotage, but that whatever, they're off camera and it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, or get them fired. Observe. <laughs> but I just think look, look, look and be prepared and look, look and be prepared and just like you said, just create, create, create and you'll learn your lessons along the way. Uh, in the one in the back, okay. Um, hi everybody, thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Olivia Francis, and I had the pleasure of working with uh, the sitcom that SCAD has, Tours and Attractions. And um, <laughs> it was a great experience, and I got to learn a lot about ensemble work, and also the fast pace of sitting with a character for so long. So I was wondering, what was kind of the biggest thing that you all learn working in an ensemble cast and with sitting with the same character and how it was to kind of learn more things about your character that you didn't really think of in the beginning and everything like that. that that's the best part is like just, just getting in there and exploring and not being able to have all the answers and predict everything, you know? You start with where you're, what's, what's crazy about doing a TV show too is you, there's there's this feedback that goes both ways where the writers are watching the show and then wanting to play to your strengths because they see what's working, what they view as what's working. And then, so then they're writing for you, but there, there's like, oh, by the way, do you know what happened when you were 10? <laughs> you didn't know about that? Here's a whole scene about it. And you're like, oh, shit. You know, uh, okay, I gotta play that now so that you find out new things all the time. Um, and you just, and, and the world just kind of keeps expanding. So it kind of like, if, if you just kind of like settle into the trust of that, of like, 
this is it's not supposed to like throw you off right? this is not the design you know it's just the way that it works um is the the world continues to be explored and the universe continues to be expanded as you go did that answer that i get so into my answers too i'm like wait a second where do we start <laughs> no, that was good. okay I, I, there's there was a letter that um agnes b demille wrote to um Anyway, in the letter, it says that as an artist, there is a blessed unrest. We're never going to be satisfied. There isn't a satisfaction. The satisfaction, that's what Jenna said, is that moment between action and cut. That's where the, the that's a sign, by the way. That's a sign. That's a sign. Uh, somebody is, something doesn't want me to say it. <laughs> or I hit something a little bit on a nerve, well, and it's all good. Uh, but yeah, so there, th th this, what, if you guys are working on whatever you're doing here, keep, d do more. Right, if you're in into photography, act. If you're into, you know, you just gotta keep doing it, and then you'll get better at it. But yeah, it's a blessed unrest. We, we, we're never gonna be satisfied, and I think that's beautiful. I think that's, that's amazing that we can like keep that's where a lot of success comes yeah. from uh, professionally, personally. Um, Just driving forward. Yeah. And also get to, getting to work with like different people who are amazing and then be like, oh my God, you're amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> Let's go to Crafty. <laughs> <laughs> Shamik, get in there. Um, for me, like anything having to do with ensemble, I feel like just what's worked for me is just letting it be natural um yeah I, i've done well pretty much everything is an ensemble right unless it's by yourself so every time like for instance uh my first project was dope and i was i felt like i came from atlanta and i'm with like asap rocky zoe kravitz and you know quincy pharrell's doing the music and forrest uh whitaker is like producing and all all these names like and um I just remember because I did an audition, right? I sent in my self tape. They liked the self tape. I had to fly out to LA. I did the chemistry read and I bombed it. It was like I was so embarrassed. Everybody, my, my team, everybody was upset. And um, yeah, it was it was like the worst feeling ever because it was mine. And then I went and I didn't do a good job in the audition because of my nerves and et cetera. And then the director called me. He was just like, come back tomorrow. He called my team. Like, come back tomorrow. You know, it's just going to be me and Shamik. For some, he somehow knew what was going on. I'm coming back to the ensemble thing. And he, I did it, just me and him. And he was like, I don't know why you couldn't do this yesterday, but you're going to have to be able to do this in front of my camera next week. You know? And I was like, ooh. He was like, he was like you're number one on my call sheet, so you got to know how to run a set. We can't be like... Nervous and da, 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 da. you you about to be around this rapper and this this that you got to be able to like it's not about anybody else but what you come in the set to do you you got to get there on time you got to come with the good energy when it's time for action like they're gonna be following you you know you set the pace you set the tone whether you're number one two three four or five on the call sheet your energy dictates everything in the project and whatever you do great the DPs are gonna gonna want to do better the your the castmates that you don't get along with is going to be like a a good rivalry now. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, they come. I'm I'm about to come crazy today on 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 this scene. Oh yeah, it's like now now the show is benefiting. Now we're getting awards. Now it's like, I hate you. I love you. I need you. I'm thankful for you. Congratulations. I'll see you on the next time. Like the ensemble thing is just like being a good person or being yourself, wh whoever whatever version of that is. You know and um, allowing it to be natural, because usually that chemistry is probably what got us in the room anyway, you know, uh, on the set anyway. And like like you guys were saying, it's like right in the, they start writing for you. They start seeing the, the energy between you and these other characters. And, you know, yeah, so just let it be natural. Have good, set your intentions and come to come to play, come to work. Who told you that, though? His name is Rick Famuyiwa. He uh, directed Dope and The Wood and Rick, some other things. That's so. awesome. Yeah. That's a blessing that he did that to, for you. Changed my life, really. Or my Amazing. perspective of work as an actor. 
he, he changed it. Yeah, because nerves is just your uh, talent trying to get out. Yeah. And he's and he saw. Yeah. <laughs> and he saw he saw you. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Wow. That was a, I'm not going to forget that one either. Jeez, on, you guys are coming with some good stuff. Um, last thing I, I want to ask this here. This panel um, is dope. See? <laughs> last thing I want to ask here. Do any of you feel like you have unfinished business with a, a previous character that you'd like to go back and revisit. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've been very lucky in my career, and it was in uh, the, the, the jobs that I've had to do and the people that I have to work with. But I will say, <clears throat> a lot of the scenes that uh, Miss Shinola Hampton and myself had to do in Shameless. Um, were uh, they were they were they were a lot of fun. Uh, it was scary. It was nerve wracking, and so when you're doing sexual stuff in a comedic way, it's a little bit easier because you don't. Ha it doesn't have to be so serious. Um, at the time, we were both married. She's still married, um, so that wasn't. And also, when the there's a boom guy eating like a sloppy Joe, there's no, <laughs> there's no like. It, that that vibe of like, hey, is it you know, no, it's a it's a job. You're going to do your job, but you know that's the first thing that popped in my mind about unfinished business. Oh, <laughs> different interpretation yeah. of the okay, that's fair. Yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Interpret the question as you wish. Anyone else? <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no? Everyone feels fully... I'm not done playing June. Mm. I'm not done. This is the last season, and I'm not done. Like, I feel like I'm mid-stride. I feel like I'm just finding my way, and so uh, I'm anticipating the unfinished business um, that I still dream. Hopefully, she may find... Um, a moment to continue. Mm -hmm. That'd be a definite goal of mine that would warm my heart forever. Um, all right, yeah. Um. <laughs> you heard it here first, that's my goal. Mm. For me, it's, it's really, I don't know about a full character, um, but there's scenes that I've done where because of my style of acting and I'm like doing it at the last, I, I hate being so familiar with the lines that it's coming out like, I know what's happening next. Like for instance, right now I'm looking for what I'm saying next and I like for it to come off like that when I'm working. So yeah, there's some scenes where it just backfired on me though. Like, ah, I wasn't done, but we gotta keep going. They gotta go on to the next shot. When I think about unfinished, unfinished business, I think there's a couple of times and pretty much almost every project. I'm proud of every project, how it turned out and whatnot. I think I could have did better in Cutthroat City with my accent, but I didn't have a lot of time. I had like five days to get in character. Anyway, that's a whole different story. I think, um, well, I guess that's unfinished business. Had I had more time, you know, if I could go back and like, you know, hey, you guys, I need, well, I took the money. It, it, that, that's really what it was. <laughs> I, I took the money. I, I took the job. I was confident. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, as an artist, I learned not to do that, like, again, unless absolutely necessary. Like, you know, do the, do the work first and then do the job. But, um, yeah, just a couple of scenes that I know I could have I went a little deeper in and left, left a little happier. Yeah.